we are doing the grade 12 RT paper one, which is the PRAC paper for the exemplar for 2018. And we are currently dealing with the third question or section C, which is the object oriented question. Our previous video, we looked at how to create the functions and procedures inside the object. And this video, we're going to be using those functions and procedures in constructors. Just to remind ourselves of what we're dealing with, we've got an object of type T player, which has an email, a name, a date of birth, and an approved field. Um, and the create uh, constructor was already done for us. The toString was already done for us. That's obviously to display the attributes. We created an accessor method called get email, which will return the, the email address. We, are, we can change the approved uh, setting based on the set approved procedure, the mutator method. Um, we created a private method called test email, which tests to see if the email is valid, which we then used in our constructor. Here we go, we used that in the constructor. And then we've got some sort of uh, function which tests the age to see if it's approved or rejected. Now, a big tip, they will never ask you to create a function or procedure if you're not going to use it. So we have five questions here. And we have only we've done the test email and we've used it inside the constructor so technically that one's ticked off so we've done that so we will definitely need to use these other three the get email the set approved and the test age it means we're definitely going to be using them. we're probably going to be using the constructor and the two string as well so that's a good guideline about what to expect going forward okay so question 3.2 let's get into it the first bit over here, let's go 3.2.1. There's a submit details button. So there is our object. We're going to go to the main bit. We're going to go to submit details. And over there, you see they've already, just to double check, they've already added the player unit. So we can access that object. And they've created a global variable called object player for us to use. So let's get stuck in. So we've got to submit details. The user needs to enter the player's email address, name, date of birth, date format. And the, you use that as the same format as the current date displayed in the date in the box. And we must use these de details to instantiate a new object. We will clear the display and do an age test result in the edit box and call the two string function. So we basically get those details, we click on it, and it must look something like that. I think the two-string function will do that. Um, so there we go. So let's double check everything. It seems like all in line. What I'm going to do, just to make my life easier, I'm going to actually put in the values into the text boxes here so that we can save time typing that out. And whoa, it's done. I just did that for you in the head of time. I just did that quickly. So it means we don't have to type it in every time we test it. So let's just go through here. So first of all, we are going to, what's the first question that part they said? We must use the details to instantiate a new object. So we already have OBJ player. Now we're going to use the create the constructor. Now the biggest mistake people do whenever they do a constructor, they'd simply go, well, we use it like all the other functions and say dot create. No, you do not do that. You go always, whenever you are using the constructor, you say the object is equal to what type of object it is. It's a T player dot create. That's the only one that's different. You do not say the object dot create. You say the object's type.create, it's always like that. And we must insert those fields. So we need a name, an email address, and a date of birth. So we're going to get the name from edt name.text. You could put these into variables as well. It's up to you. I'm just doing it very quickly here. Um, and then the next field, if I remember correctly, um, what's the next field in the constructor? If you're not too sure, you can double check here. Then it's the email address. So that would be edt, the email address, dot text. They all are strings, so that's fine. And then the last one would be the edt date of birth, if I remember correctly. So you could put those into variables and then use the variables here, but you can do it directly like that. The key thing, please remember, you do, when you use the constructor, you do not say the object dot create. You say the object is equal to what type of object it is dot create. That's the only time you do that after that. We can start going obj player dot test or not test email, but um, 
get uh, email, set approved, and use all those other functions that we used. So we did the first bit, which was to instantiate a new player. Now we must clear the display area there and the age test result edit box. Okay, so let's start that. EDT age test results. I'm assuming it's that one. So that I'm going to just clear. You could also say dot text equals to nothing. And the display is it a rich edit or a memo? That's a rich edit, rich edit display. Dot clear. So we clear those. And then we're going to use the two string method to display the details in the display. So that means we're going to say the rich edit display dot lines dot add. And it's going to be our object T player or OBGA player dot to string which was done for us okay so that now we can start saying the object dot and its functions and procedures so that's going to return that so already we can look here we've already used that one i'm going to put a little comment here say used because we used it inside the constructor we have used that one and we've used the to string so we know which ones we've used so we definitely need to use those ones still so let's just see if it works. Uh, isn't it nice that it's already filled in? There we go. So it's not approved. But um, if I made the email address, just for interest sake, let's make it a 7. That should be an invalid one. Ah, so the error one is working. So that's fantastic. So that's working great. So let's go through. Now the test age button. So on this one, the user must enter in the minimum age. In the edit box and use that age to, to call the argument test age so we use and if test with the player's age adheres to the requirements and we display the result so it's going to re remember test age will return approved or rejected so we need some sort of string result and we're going to put it in the test result um, edit control so that's quite easy to do there's nothing else i think we have to do so there we go so let's go back here we're going to I'm going to put in a 16 in that so we can automatically not have to type anything in because I'm lazy like that. I'm just going to put a 16 in there. So that is the EDT age. So for this one, we're going to extract the age. I want it as an integer. So age of type integer. And my answer for my, is going to be some sort of string. That's going to be the approved or rejected. So I'm going to make that a string. So first of all, let's get the age. That's going to be from EDT age dot text but that is a string we want it to be an integer so what is it it's a string to int converted and then once that's done now i can call my object object player dot i think it was test age it's returning a string. That's why we put in the answer, which will be approved or rejected into a string. So I'm going to say test age. It needs an integer that represents the age. I will give it to that integer. And once I got the answer, I can go edt age result. And the text property of it must equal to s answer. Both of those are strings. So we get the age from the user. We then send it into the test age function that we created for the object or that we've currently loaded. It compares that age with the one that we've just loaded, and then it sends the answer to that. Now, just a reminder, when you test this, you can't just test the age straight away because you haven't loaded the details into the object. So you first must load the details into the object, and then you can test the age. So at the moment, it's approved. So if he's born in 2000, um, he'll probably be... Um, 18 years old so if we make the minimum age 21 you can see that it's now rejected because he's not old enough he, I assume it's him can't make assumptions like that okay nearly there last one 3.2.3 the approved button now for this button so just let's go back quickly let's go back to our functions we used the test age so we used that one so we only have two more to go boom and then we should be done yeah, so this question. Use the result of the age test and the content of the email attribute of the object to determine whether the player's application can be approved. If the age has not been approved or the email address has an error, 
then the following message must be displayed. The player's age or email has been rejected. Also call the correct method to ensure that the approved status is false. Okay, and if the application meets all the requirements, then we can change the approved status to true. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so the approved status we're going to use. Clear and update the content of the display area to show the latest approved status. Okay, so step by step, let's go. The result of the age and the content of the email address determine whether the player's application can be approved or not. Okay, so we can assume they're going to go through all those buttons. So the first thing I'm going to go is do an if statement. So if that edit result dot text equals approved in capitals, that's the one criteria. We could do all of this again, but we've already let's assume that they've done they've had to click on that button to get to this stage. If it's approved, that's the one criteria. And at the same time, that the email address is not equal to error. Now, remember, we need to be able to access that email address or the value in the email address field, which we can by that function. So there we're going to use this one now. Ah, there's a reason why they asked us to make this one. So, and if the object dot get email equals is not equal to the word error. We don't want it to equal to the word error. If those two criteria are true, then we are satisfied that they are, are, are approved. So I'm going to just put those properties. Remember, multiple criteria you put in brackets. If those criteria are true, so they're approved and the email address is not equal to an error, then we can say that the object dot set approved oh we can use it we can set it to true because it's all approved so we can say uh, you know what we've now finally used the final one we are all done no there's still more to do but at least we know we've used all our functions and procedures we can set it to true but if it's not that else if it's not approved or if the, if it is equal to error, if one of those is true or both of them are true they or i mean is false if both of those are false or one of them is false sorry then the object dot set approved must be set to false because we they are not approved we, we refuse to approve them okay so once that's done um but just remind if it's not approved they also said we must display this message so we're going to display a message if it's not approved. Okay, so we're not just doing one thing here then. So I'm going to just put a begin end here. And this is the end of the else. Well, we set it to approved equals false. And show message that text. And it's not working because the don't put apostrophes in your your messages because it's going to clash with the current apostrophes so if it's not approved then we set it to false and we display our lovely little message and then once it's done we must clear the rich edit dot clear because that's what i said all, all once it's all done we must clear the display and update the display which means we must just display in the rich edit again dot lines dot add and we can add the object dot to string function so we clear it and we update it maybe something to change so let's run through it just following the the specific steps so we submit the details we test the age it's approved so we're happy that the email address is valid and the test is approved we're going to check if it's approved it's now approved is set to yes fantastic but if I change one thing in the email address, now the email address is incorrect. Although the, the age is correct, the approved says, ah, it was rejected. So it set stays or no. If I change the email address to a correct option, but the age is incorrect, so I submit the details, the email's okay, but the age is rejected, that one also gets rejected because that criteria is not satisfied. So there we go. So there we know it all works. Fantastic. So we've done all the, the little bits of this object and we are finished with the object question. For the other videos in this series with the exemplar as well as other videos in Delphi, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, go click on the playlists and see what categories we've got available to you. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and remember don't do it the long way. 
do it the Mr. Long way.